Hello fellas, welcome back. I've came to see Gary. Got something totally different and personally something I love. This is a BMW E9 3 litre CS. Uh, what year is it Gary? 72. 72. And now this, this isn't a show car, it's not a standard car. This to you is a tool, isn't it? Yeah. Something you go out in on a Sunday or a Saturday and just go hammer around the back road and just have fun in really, isn't it? Yeah, that's what it's all about really. Even, I mean, they're worth quite a lot of money now, aren't they? These, you were just telling us earlier on. Yeah. You're looking at about 60 50, grand for, 50, 60. Yeah. For, for one of these. You've had this? 23 years. 23 a year? Bought in 1999. You were saying as well, when you got it, you paid more than what you should have for it. It, it looked nice when I bought it. Uh, but what he'd done, he'd, he'd, there was like a few holes in it here and there, the door skins and around the sunroof and he just had it flashed over mm -hmm. and everything was full of filler. Right. And then a few months after I got it, obviously all the filler started bubbling up and I didn't do anything with it because I had nowhere to do it and I, I kept it. I used it infrequently and I had it in storage. Right. And then in 2006, I rented a unit for handy money like 40 quid a week or something uh -huh. like that and uh, and I, I did it up over the course of I spent every spare hour in it did, yeah just and working it, on it yeah and about nine months I think it was you see it used to have a sunroof as well didn't you you took the sunroof out it used to have the sunroof but all around the sunroof was rotten and I had a, a, a guy who I knew from, who lives in South End on sea and I was chatting to him one day about the car I said I've got nearly everything I need now but I don't know what I'm going to do with the roof. Right. And he said, well, I've got a car that I'm breaking that you can have the roof off. He said, but there's only one problem. It's got no sunroof. I said, it suits me fine. I said, I hate sunroofs. Anyway. I'm not a fan of sunroofs in cars. No. And the, the thing is, they just that. add weight. Exactly. 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 So go wrong as well. I went down. I, I, I had a transit van at the time. So I drove down to South End on sea one Saturday morning. We took the last couple of bits off this car before the scrap man come to take it away and we just cut through the pillars with a hacksaw what just the ear be just what? cut straight through the pillars put the roof in the back of the van and then when i got it home i unpicked the skin off the frame right and then i did the same with the car so i actually have a, a restoration blog well not a blog uh, a video on youtube so it's on the youtube all oh, right i'll leave a link below so basically the original frame of the car was, was left intact and just the outer skin of the roof was put on the original frame. Um, so I, obviously rather than cut through the pillars because that's where all the strength is. Uh -huh. So you just um, don't pick the spot welds and obviously yeah, put it on? Yeah. So it's a joint along here somewhere, is it? There's a joint about there. Uh -huh. um, I believe it or not, the, I didn't spot weld the roof back on. I welded it on the pillars and the rest of it was glued on. Right. With, with um, it's a 3M panel bond. Is it what they use on our laser it, it's, and that Well, now? similar, but it's what body shops use nowadays. They don't weld stuff. Really? And it was a body shop lab that put me onto it, actually. And he said, if you think about it, he said it's stronger. He said, because it's bonded continuously all the way around, not just in a few spots. He said, and the, as the advantage of, because to spot weld two bits of metal, they've got to be bare. There's got to be no paint on. Right. He said, so because you've glued it on, it's sealed. And you won't oh, get, right. you so won't get rust. Bare metal on metal. So you won't get rust between between uh, the spot right. welds. Cover on the side. Of course you can. So it's pretty basic, stripped out. There's Have you got just... somewhere for your cups to go? No. <laughs> Have you not? Between your legs. <laughs> I do plan on getting some cup holders, but I just stole them between it's the nice legs. Nice inside. I like the steering wheel as well. It's weird. I've got five steering wheels. I've got a thing for steering wheels at the minute. Well, it, it kind of started by accident because the, the original steering wheel I got was wood. Right. Well, no, the original steering wheel on the car was wood. Big skinny thing. Yeah, but when I, when I did it up and when I stripped it out, it didn't, the wooden steering wheel didn't go with the rest of the car, if you see what I mean. Right. So then I got a different steering wheel. And when it turned up, it was actually an Alpina steering wheel. When it turned up, it was it was 380 mil and it's a bit too big. I prefer 350. Is that what that is, 350? That's 350. So I stuck with that for, I don't know, a, a few years. And then I bought that one. And then when I got that one, at first I wasn't so sure because it, it, it it's, it's all right now. It's kind of bedded in, but the suede felt a bit weird at first. Right. So I bought another one. A leather one, but that was just like a Chinese knockoff, more and more. Uh, I've seen them Chinese knockoffs one, they seem to bend a lot, don't they, the same week? Well, that one isn't. 
The one, is it not? No, I know what a mate of mine, he got one and he said it, it, it felt horrible. Yeah, it felt horrible. But the one I got was all right. It's quite a good copy, to be fair. But then recently I bought a, or I should have said I got, because my last bought it for me. Nice, uh, A limited edition Momo Prototype or Black Edition. Is that a BMW, Stephen Will? No, it? it's just a Momo, you put it on anything, but it's uh, it's black leather, black stitching. Instead nice. of having prototype or painted on in white, it's engraved in, just in black. Um, nice. So anyway, it's a limited edition yeah, one. Nice. Are these your fuel lines here? They're the fuel lines, so everything's internal. The fuel lines are internal, the brake lines are internal. Where's your brake lines? Um, so the brake line runs down this side, then over there in, onto the, oh, right, onto the, the bias. bias valve, and then down and then along. The bias valve, that looks like an old It's a Wilwood one. Thing. To be honest with you, it's redundant because I just have it fully open. Yeah, so, so the, is that like 50-50? It, it basically, the back's getting, there's nothing trimmed off the back that gets everything that I can put through the pedal. Right. So uh, it's running Porsche, 996 Carrera 2 calipers front and rear. Right, front and rear. Front and rear, four pots, using seven series front discs, E12 535 uprights. Can we pop the bonnet and have a look under there? No bother. It's a big engine mind that, isn't it? Three litre? No, it's a, it's a three and a half litre. Slightly modified, but it's not tuned for maximum power, so it's running individual throttle bodies, as you can see. These were originally off a Triumph motorbike. What, the throttle bodies? The throttle bodies were was off, off a three-cylinder motorbike? Yeah, so basically, I was quite lucky. When the idea popped into my head about using throttle bodies, it was a long time ago, and your normal things like your R1s and your GSXR and all that lot, they were going for around £150 a set. Right. And I would have had to buy two sets uh -huh. and then chuck 75 quids worth of weight because I only need six instead of, instead of eight. Uh -huh. Then one day I was on eBay and I seen these come up. So I messaged the guy and said, can you send me the width and the height of the... Because they were like oval uh -huh. instead of round. And they were almost a perfect match for the ports on, on the, the head. On the cylinder head? On the cylinder head. So I bought them and then... Did he have two sets, did he? No. He had one set? He had one set and then I had to wait about a year. <laughs> <laughs> For a second For set. For another set to come up. So I bought them and then I took an, an inlet manifold down to an engineering workshop with the throttle bodies, with one throttle body, and I explained to them that I needed a plate that would bolt to the cylinder head that you could bolt the throttle bodies to. Mm -hmm. And I just give them everything and they made that for me. So is this the plate here? That's the plate there that they made, which cost me, it was about 200 quid. Is it aluminium? Uh, that's aluminium, yeah. But the problem was is it interfered with the thermostat housing. The plate did? The plate did because the plate and the thermostat housing wanted to be kind of in the same place. So what I had to do, I had to cut a piece out of the thermostat housing and cut a piece out of the plate and get them welded together. Right. And this, I had that made because originally the pipe finished about there but pointed down. So that's so, your water pipe obviously. So this is the water pipe to, obviously to clear the fuel rail and everything that you can see. And then I had to make the linkage system. Oh right. So I made all that myself. Looks nice mine. Yeah, these were quite interesting to make these four posts because they all had to be exactly the same otherwise the, the rod wouldn't pass through them. Right. So what I had to do because I made these by hand, just obviously with a hacksaw and a drill and what have you, was I made the holes oversize and then I got some bushes, because this is 10 mil, I think it's 10 mil or 12 mil bar. So I got some fossil bronze bushes uh -huh. to fit on the bar and basically put the, put the bushes in with aerodite on them and pass the bar through all the lot so that once the glue had set... Oh, right, it was all in line. It was all in line. It had that to sounds be a good idea. Because the bar held it all in line. But I have got another head. So I was saying to you, it's not tuned for maximum power. I kind of tuned it. I've, I've made it for torque, so... So it's nice driving. The cam's got a wide lobe angle, which gives you more bottom end grunt, but less top end grunt. And it's not got enough compression, really. So I've got a cylinder head going down to AMAC Engineering 
where Scott helps out, who you did a video with uh -huh. last year. So I've got a head going down there. It's going to have, uh, they're going to port it and put race valves in it. And I'm probably going to go a bit dafter with the cam this time. So currently it's about 240 brake and I'm hoping That's to really, get... isn't it? What do you think the car weighs? It weighs 1,300 kilos, which is a lot um, right. for what it is. It's a big but car. It's a big Even car. Even for an old car, it's quite, still quite surprisingly big for an old car. Yeah, it is. I mean, at the time when they, when they produced these, this was like the flagship top of the range, you know, grand touring car, right. if you will. One yeah. thing that I found interesting, what you mentioned, is the price of the bonnet now. This is aluminium, the bonnet and the boot, isn't it? It's got a genuine CSL, which was a, like a limited run homologation special. So you hear people talking about the Batmobiles uh -huh. that they raced. So that's what we're talking about. So it's got a genuine CSL bonnet and boot lid. It's got the aluminium door skins, but they're not genuine CSL doors. So the door skins are aluminium. So on the CSLs, the, the door shell, if you will, the frame was still steel, but the outer skin was aluminium. And one of these bonnets sold on eBay with bids, was it two or three years ago? Uh, for 10 grand. Are you not tempted to sell it and just put something else? Just no. I kind of, I, I've thought about it, but like a couple of mates have gone, no, you can't get rid of it. You, can, you can't. So they, they were worth so much money that there's a guy on the E9 forums, a uh, lad like called Mark, I forget his, uh, his forum name. He started having them reproduced. Reproduced. And he sells them at five grand a pop. So what you done to the back of the car then, Gary? Because I do like this part, twin exhaust. So originally the exhaust came out on this side. Single pipe? A single pipe on this side and the spare wheel well was here so it kind of had to come along the back of the car and then snake round the spare wheel well and come out here. When I restored the car I cut the boot floor out of it right? because it was all cracked. Can we have a look in the boot? Why of course you can. So originally uh, it didn't come with a, it came with an open diff but it's got a, a limited slip diff fitted. Uh -huh. And when they were fitted with a limited slip diff, they, they would, because they'd put that much torque through the boot floor, all the boot floor would crack, a little bit like the problem they had with the e 46 M3s. So the same thing, so when they restored it, I strengthened up the diff mounting uh, with two mil steel, so uh -huh. obviously it's already, I don't know, 1.2 or whatever it was. I put two mil steel around it and I put some fillets across to, Brit to spread the load out. And then that strengthening plate there is on the other side of it. And then I brought these bars down uh -huh. from so the turrets. Rock solid now. So to stop that, but I'd cut all this out. So originally the spare wheel was here and the fuel tank was there. So I made my own boot floor so that I could put the exhaust on both sides. Uh -huh. um, what length is this fuel tank now? I can't remember, I made that. I made the fuel tank, mm, crikey, 10 year ago. Maybe Is it all bit. baffled in that? Too? It's baffled, but I didn't baffle it well enough. So, so, kind of so I still need the swirl pot. And the reason there's two lots of pipes was because originally I'd already planned with that engine that I was going to put two sets of injectors in it. So I was going to have inboard injectors and then for high revs, I was going to have the injectors outside of the trumpets. Mm -hmm. I never went through that with that in the end because I, to run the injectors outside of the trumpets I would have had to run it without an air filter and I, and I, right. just, and I just didn't fancy yeah. doing that. I know some people do, it's personal choice. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're going out, just take your time, knee showing off for now, do you know what I mean? Maybe just a couple of small pulls or something, but uh, you're a bad passenger. Aye, <laughs> I, I want to get home, do you know what I mean? You've got no stereo on here, have you? Nothing. The engine makes all the music. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of kit do you got to do with it, Gary? What's 
sorry. What kind of roll cage have you got in? I made it. You made it? I made the roll cage. It's, it's all on welding six pod. Well, six, it's, it's, sorry, it's a multi-point. Yeah, so it comes. it's not mounted to the floor. It's mounted to the sills. Right. To the inner sills. Uh, basically, I mean, apart from the fact that it would protect me, it was more to keep the shell rigid. Rigid. Because they did flex a lot, especially with them being pillarless. Uh -huh. Well, no people are. Yeah, well, basically, that's right, it's not beef, Ella. Uh -huh. So, I see you've got, uh, what that management you've got on there, Emerald? It's an Emerald ECU, yeah. That's a nice car, this one, I like this. Like, see, it's a tool, isn't it? It's I like cars like this, a bit of character. It's uh, just for going out and having some fun. Uh, I mean, I do. You see it, it's full of stone chips. It's still got dead flies all over it. It's, yeah, it's just class. Wouldn't be the same if it was pristine. Yeah, well, no, it wouldn't. And the thing is, at the end of the day, I, I know it's each to their own, but just to have it sat in a garage looking shiny, I don't nah, get it. Nah. It's go out, bring its neck, have some fun. Uh -huh. Gary? I made it. How do you do that? Look at Fiberglass. So basically, it had a spoiler on it that sort of stopped about there, uh -huh. and it had kept. Uh, it got damaged, and it kept cracking, and it was flimsy, and it didn't look really neaty. So what I did, you, to make something out of fiberglass, you need a mould. But to uh -huh. make a mould, you need a book. You need something to take a mould off. Like a part? A part. Yeah. So what I did, the old spoiler, you'll see on the, it's on, it's on my YouTube channel. I stuck bits of cardboard to it and gaffer taped it and stuff. Once I got that bit, I glassed over it and then I cut the holes out. And then once I cut the holes out, I put bits of cardboard going in the hole. So the holes got depth rather than just being a, a flat hole. Uh -huh. Did the same again glass them in and then once i'd got the shape that i wanted I, I filled it all super smooth rubbed it down primed it and then i painted it with polyurethane because uh, it, the fiberglass resin doesn't react with the poly it doesn't stick to it so much so then once i'd done that i made a mold and once i've made the mold i made the part so did you sell these no no one has to buy one the thing is, there's... How is in it? There's probably... Well, once you've got them all, it's easy. There's probably less than a thousand of these cars of all types mm -hmm. in the country. And most of them want to keep them standard. Uh -huh. So you've got a very limited market. Maybe sell five or ten. You know, if you were lucky. If you were lucky. Nice door. Suits a car. I, I do like it. I do like it. I'm toying with the idea of making another one with different brake ducts. What uh, suspension have you got on the car? Don't call your bus. It's on the original M535 uprights. I cut the spring platforms off and put adjustable platforms on. The inserts, the actual shock absorbers, are Bill Steins, right, front and rear. But on the back, it's the separate coil spring and shock absorber rather than all one unit. Right, nice. It's, That's too bumpy, is it? It's not bad. The next two things are plexiglass windows. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah, plexiglass windows to save weight. I'm going to do away with the winder mechanisms as well. Uh huh. Well, uh, they've got the windows wide down. Yeah. Is this them? No, that's for your quarter line. Oh, that's right, it's electric windows. So it's got electric windows, front and rear. But I'm going to do away with the winder mechanisms. Are you going to put that, that slidey hatch on the window? No, I'm going to have them so that you can let them go down. Without the electric motor. Are you going to put a strap or something on? Yeah, on the fronts. The backs, I've worked out how to make a uh, put a railing. 
so that I can slide them in and out. So instead of them going up and down, when you want to drive with the windows out, down, you'll just take them out. Take them out. Cheers for that, Gary. No bother. You've got a YouTube channel and Instagram as well, haven't you? I have, so if you Instagram uh, BMW 3.0 CS. I'll leave the links below. Yeah, and then there's a link from me Instagram to me YouTube. I'll leave all the links below, fellas. I'll also leave a link to my Instagram as well. Um, but yeah, again, thanks for watching. Thanks to Gary for taking us out. You're welcome. And I'll, uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.